Yo, what's going down, Green Screen Entertainment fans? Your homie Jay Green back right now with another review. Right now, I'm about to break y'all off with my thoughts, opinions, and feelings on the brand new movie, Megan. Now, this movie was directed by Gerard Johnstone, and it stars Allison Williams, Violet McGraw, Amy Donald, and Jenna Davis. Now, for all of y'all out there who have no idea what this movie is all about, we're basically following Katie, a young girl who has lost her parents tragically. She goes to stay with her aunt while her aunt is in the midst of trying to create this major game-changing product for this toy company that she works for. She ends up giving Katie this prototype lifelike doll to help comfort her and be a friend to her in this time of need, if you will. But of course, as AI has shown to us in many films before it, it will eventually take on a life of its own, and that's where things start to go left. An entire race of machines where human beings are no longer born. We are grown. All right, fam, now let me take y'all on a trip down memory lane, way back in 1988, to be specific, when I first seen a movie about a crazy, sick serial killer that put his soul into a doll hoping to cheat death. And then as he became the doll, he tried to put his soul into a young boy, an innocent, cute young boy, to continue to live on and kill more people. And that movie was called Child's Play. Hi, what do you think? Now, ever since I was a young lad and I've seen Child's Play, I've always been interested in films where there's some kind of crazy doll that comes to life and shit like that. Because to me, even though I was a youngster that should not have been watching this movie, it was hella entertaining, funny as hell, sick, twisted, and just extremely creative. And I loved the original trilogy. There's movies after it that have come out that I thought were pretty fly, but all the iterations are not all that good. With that said, any movie that comes out about a doll that has come into life or possessed or taken on a life of its own, I'm always going to think of that original trilogy, Child's Play. And I'm sure y'all are like that too. So when you saw the trailer for Megan, just like me, you were probably like, okay, here we go. Another child's play, but now with a woman. And I'm gonna tell you like this, this movie did not disappoint and it is not another child's play, but with a woman. It is its own thing. And you know what? I loved it. It's insane, right? Now for me, where this film, Megan, excels is actually in the emotional elements versus the horrific elements. Yo, the kills are fun, Megan is fly, funny as hell, she got swag, all of that is legit. But the glue that holds this entire film together is Gemma and Katie. We're talking about the aunt and the little girl. And the reason why it's fly is because when she first gets to Gemma's house, it's very cold to her, right? It's not a house that's built for a child. Gemma's already a hardworking, corporate type person, scientist type, if you will, trying to build these high, sophisticated toys. She got toys on her shelf that she can't even play with. So this is definitely not the element for a young child to grieve over the loss of her parents. So with all that said, their relationship is extremely rocky from the get go. Now, as time goes on, and then she gives her the doll, everything is like happy-go-lucky. It seems as though Katie is kind of getting over the loss of her parents in a way or another. But later on, we see that Katie is not actually bonding in the way with Gemma that she should be. She's actually bonding more so with Megan. So in the beginning of the movie, when Katie actually goes to stay with Gemma for the first time, there's like a therapist or a social worker type person that comes over. Right off the tip, you're kind of nervous, like, man, who's this bitch coming up in here trying to cause some trouble for our protagonist? But what I thought was super fly and super smart was that the way that this social worker, if you will, or therapist, if you will, is dealing with what's going on between Gemma and Katie and or Megan, right? She's kind of laying the foundation for how a child would technically need to be greeted over the loss of her parents or something tragic like this? Where should she be looking for that attention? Who should she be looking towards for that uh, comfort, if you will? And we find out uh, through a very smooth, non-expositional way that she should be looking towards Gemma straight up. Now, most of y'all out there know that. Even I know that. But Katie don't know that. Gemma don't know that. But 
Megan does. So what Megan is doing is she's very smart and learning a lot of different things about death and this and that. So what she's doing is she's trying to coax Katie more onto her side. So as certain things start to jump off, Katie's always gonna have Megan's back. Or when Gemma finally starts to understand what Megan is doing, and then tries to talk to Katie about it, Katie's gonna be like, yo, why are you tripping? This is my homie, this is my friend. You can't take my friend away. And that's where a lot of the issues start to jump off when Katie becomes so insistent on always having Megan around and being with Megan and never wanting to listen to Gemma. That's when it all kind of jumps off. And again, what I loved about the writing and the way that they put the emotional elements at the forefront was the fact that I'm really watching this film almost from a drama standpoint. Like, damn, this woman is trying to gain the acceptance and the appreciation of her niece, but she's fighting over her niece's friend who appears to be more cool and have all the answers. And I thought that drama being something that was like almost more engaging than the fact that we're worried about a killer doll, yo, that's fly ass writing. The other thing is you can also look at this movie as a bit of a commentary or a satire on the way that young people are today, always needing a electronic device, if you will, at the ready, always needing to look up something on the internet as opposed to going to ask their parents, like back in the day, right? This movie says a lot of those things, but it has it all combined so well in a fun, entertaining, thrilling, horrific type, thought-provoking film. Yo, Blumhouse and James Wan, one of the main writers, James Wan does it again. Phenomenal, it's great. Now clearly the emotional draw is gonna be Allison Williams and Violet McGraw, but Megan, let's talk about Megan for a moment, shines, she's being played by Amy Donald and Jenna Davis. Amy Donald is a little girl basically in the Megan outfit, right, from time to time, doing her little moves and her little dances and all that sort of stuff, which is fly as hell, but putting it all together with the voice is Jenna Davis. I loved both of these chicks as Megan. Megan was fly as hell. If you imagine putting Chucky, the Bride of Chucky, Teddy Ruxpin, whatever other dolls that you've ever seen come to life all together in a swaggerific package of murder and possessiveness, that's what Megan is, and it's fly as shit. There's certain things that Megan is supposed to do in the beginning, which are great, like help remind Katie how to do this, that, and the other thing. And she's super fly, super cute while she does it. But then, when it comes time for Megan to go a little bat shit, right? She's doing that, and she's pulling it off very sadistic, almost in like a Joker type way, where she's enjoying what she's doing, she knows what she's doing, she knows she might not really need to do it that way, it's not like her existence is being threatened, like someone's gonna shut her down for real, for real, she could have just been doing her thing, but she's becoming such a her own person that she's like enjoying this on a sick, twisted level, and that's really fun to see. Mm. And you need Jesus. So my final thoughts on this film are that it's great. Definitely go to the theater, check it out, support this type of a movie, especially if you want something that is original. Even though you've seen a killer doll type film before, this movie is its own thing. It holds its own weight and it has multiple levels to it that are gonna be fun for repeat viewings from all. And if you see it with a large crowd of people, the whole theater is gonna be making some ruckus in the best way possible at certain times. I had a great time with this movie. Check it out for sure. Now, the last thing I'm gonna leave you with is this. I was listening to uh, someone I follow on YouTube religiously, Robert Meyer Burnett. He was talking to uh, Tom Conkle. He's a director, producer type guy. Now, these guys are both legendary in the sense that they've been in the industry for a long time, writing, directing, producing, working with all types of different stars at all types of different levels, reading, and just understanding and being students of the game of film and storytelling, if you will. And Tom Conco had mentioned that noir film, which we know of today as kind of being dark and moody and whatever, that noir film basically came from just having a low budget. 
not having much money to make a film, so maybe the lighting wasn't up to where the lighting standards would be on a bigger budget film, right? Maybe you had to think of more creative ways to get your point across or tell your story. And for me, when I heard that, I was like, damn, so maybe Blumhouse and like an A24 are kind of like the new age noir film companies because they keep seeming to come up with these low budget phenomenal films, whether they be straight horror movies or dramas or some kind of sick weird comedy or just a multiverse of comedy like Everything Everywhere All at Once. These are low budget films that seem to have, to me, more repeat viewing deeper elements of emotion, drama, horror, whatever, done better, more suspenseful, very thrilling, intriguing, super original, great films with amazing acting nine times out of 10. So with watching Megan and then hearing that, I'm like, damn, Blumhouse does it again. And again, if you want original, great stories that are fun, that have repeat viewing opportunities, go check them out. This is definitely going to be one of those films. Megan, it's in theaters right now. Yo, I hope I gave you a little bit of knowledge and insight to what this movie is all about. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, hook your homie up with a like and a subscribe. It really helps out this channel. I'm trying to do a lot more on this channel, not just reviews. So your support and all the comments y'all give and the conversations y'all start with me, I appreciate it. I love it. And I thank y'all for that. Your homie, Jay Green, I'm out.